Aloha. The Sega Genesis has nearly 900 games in its ever-growing library, many of which are considered bona fide classics. Beat-em-ups in the Streets of Rage or Golden Axe franchises, shmups like Thunder Force 3 or 4, platformers like Shinobi 3 or Earthworm Jim, running guns like Contra Hardcore or Gunstar Heroes, side-scrolling action games like Dick Tracy or Batman and Robin, and of course, Sonic the Hedgehog. It's also worth mentioning that some of the most unique and genre-bending games ever made were released on the Genesis. Echo the Dolphin, for instance. However, if you're looking for a game that is not only unique, but also loaded with satire, charm, and hilarious humor, then look no further than Toe Jam and Earl, a funkadelic adventure featuring two hip aliens who crash land on Earth. The game was created in 1991 by the collaborative team of Greg Johnson and Mark Vorzanger. Toe Jam and Earl represent kind of a outside satirical perspective on who we are as Earthlings and they kind of are making a statement about, you know, how crazy we are and how self-destructive we are and how self-involved we are and all that kind of thing. That's what all of that silly comedy is really kind of underlying that. If you were to classify Toe Jam and Earl's gameplay, the term roguelike would be front and center, as the game's biggest inspiration came from the 1980 computer game Rogue. This includes 25 randomly generated levels, presents to find and open, as well as a plethora of quirky earthlings to encounter. These components ensured that fans had a reason to keep playing Toe Jam and Earl for years, even decades after its initial release. There were a lot of elements in the game that were sort of roguelike elements, the randomly generated worlds and the open-ended exploration, and those elements are not specific to Toe Jam and Earl, but the thing that Toe Jam and Earl did was it turned it um, light-hearted and cooperative. One of the most recognizable elements of Toe Jam and Earl is its funky fresh soundtrack composed by John Baker. <laughs> A lot of the, the way the audio sounded, too, was due to the fact that Mark Miller came up with sampling real instruments to the MIDI. I record, in the old days it was a little uh, tape to set recorder, and uh, forced them to listen to me singing bass lines and drums, rhythm beats and choruses and stuff, and then they tried to do their best to turn it into actual music. And that's how the original Toe Jam and Earl theme uh, So it was, it was you beatboxing into a, uh, a little tape recorder? Quarter, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was on some hillside in Nevada walking as I was seeing. <laughs> Toe Jam and Earl, at its heart, is a multiplayer cooperative game. It was designed with this in mind. And to be fair, it isn't quite the same experience playing by yourself. The very humorous and chaotic nature of the game demands another human being to be fully realized. Still, I think that the real magic of Toe Jam and Earl is in the way it facilitates play for people. And the real magic happens kind of on this side of the screen between people as they cooperate and the, the game has always been at its best when it's being shared. One of the most lasting and entertaining aspects of Toe Jam and Earl wasn't one specific element per se, but how they all came together to create a fun and chaotic environment. The procedurally generated worlds, the sandbox mentality, the multitude of distinct presents and varied enemies all had a tendency to come together at unexpected moments to produce hilarious results. Even after decades, new things continue to happen every time you play So Jam and Earl. Aloha. You never know what's going to happen. That's one of the things about making it kind of freeform like that is it's much easier to surprise people because you just don't know what's 
what's coming next. The rationale for that, I guess, was that it was sort of through alien eyes. It's how Jam and Earl saw Earth, and it's just this crazy mixed up place that doesn't make any sense, and to them it is just all a bunch of insanity. I mean, that is Toe Jam and Earl. It was all kind of like, oh, don't think too hard. It's all a little stream of consciousness, and that's part of the freedom of it, I guess. While sales were initially slow, Toe Jam and Earl eventually became a sleeper hit, with the characters themselves even becoming second-tier mascots for Sega. This success led to Johnson for Zanger Productions producing the Toe Jam and Earl-themed light gun game Ready Aim Tomatoes in 1992 for the Menacer, Sega's answer to Nintendo's Super Scope 6. Good shooting! Not. Nah. Next, in 1993, an official sequel was released titled Panic on Funkatron. Toe Jam and Earl's second outing was met with high anticipation from fans and brisk sales. However, due to pressure from Sega, Panic on Funkatron was a massive departure, with a roguelike and isometric gameplay of the first game being replaced instead with more traditional 2D platforming action. While this alienated some fans, the game was very well received upon release. It also implemented many new gameplay elements, such as dance-offs, underwater levels, NPCs to interact with, a plethora of secrets to discover, and a much richer world to explore. It could also be argued that Panic on Funkatron introduced Toe Jam and Earl to an entirely new audience that missed out on the first game. It all seems to depend on what people come to first. Right? Water levels in Panic on Funkatron were so unnerving for me. Water levels and mazes just... Uh, yeah. Don't go together, they shouldn't. And Was that Sega's idea? Uh, no, I probably have to take the blame for that one. Uh, I thought the puffer fish would be the saving grace and make that not too hard, but you know, now going back to it and playing it, even I get stuck sometimes. And... Aloha. I am called Wahini Kali Nana A'a Uala Upa, which means Wahini of the well rounded coconuts. After Panic on Funkatron, there were several attempts to create a third game, which were scrapped due to the poor sales of the Sega Saturn and discontinuation of the Dreamcast. Finally, in 2002, Toe Jam and Earl 3 Mission to Earth was released on the Xbox. It was an ambitious game which incorporated extended cutscenes, an emphasis on hip hop elements, and a much wider scope than its two prequels. Give it up, give it up, give it up for Master T. Say ho for the greatest rapper around the DJ TJ. I jam your rap, your head is spinning like a I'm beach. I'm just ball. cruising in the funky flow, you know. Everybody round, yo, they moving at high speed. I'm chilling it down, you know, moving at my speed. Everybody the name's a teacher, and I'm in the house now. Breaking it down the best I know how. You know I'm new, but I know this much. Yo, something was missing here, the female touch. All right. Unfortunately, Mission to Earth was a critical and commercial disappointment. 
While some fans considered it a return to form with gameplay that was similar to the first game, for many, it simply missed the mark. I love hip hop music, and I feel like that's kind of a appropriate for Toe Jam and Earl, especially since they're kind of growing up a little bit. They're a little taller and thinner, and、um, Toe Jam's actually wearing clothes now. <laughs> In the early game, they were sort of like preteens, and now they're teenagers. I have mixed feelings about the third game. It's the overall complexity of it, and then there was a bunch of structural changes that I just wish we hadn't done, and we did it at the behest of our publisher. It was kind of too much, too scattered. It sort of, I think, it lost some of the focus. But there was a lot of really fun. Presents that were kind of obscure, that were a little rare, and a whole wide variety of Earthlings that we introduced. But I think it was an awful lot of fun to play once you really got a handle. Well, that's about it. No more to say. You got the picture. We do it in our own way. Yo, me and E, and even T, some we got it going on. The funky threesome. Till the next time, you need us all. We'll be chilling it out. You know, waiting for the call. In terms of where Toe Jam and Earl falls in the echelon of gaming, it has an incredibly strong following to this day, which includes a so-called shmup master. Nostalgia may be a powerful drug, as well as memories from our childhoods, but in Toe Jam and Earl's case, the game really is fun. The reason for this is simple. Rather than just being sent on a mission from point A to point B, Toe Jam and Earl allows you to play within the game itself. There is no greater gift than that in a video game, and it's the reason, even after all these years, that Toe Jam and Earl is one of the most loved games of all time. You spend an awful lot of hours playing the games you love, and it happens at a time in your life when you're very impressionable, and some of those memories are really forming. And I guess now, in retrospect, I can see why it ends up meaning so much to people. But、uh, I still am always surprised. <laughs> Which brings us to the present day. What have Toe Jam and Earl been up to anyway? Let's find out. My name is Toe Jam. I'm Big Earl.、Mm -hmm. We coming at you from Funkatron. Funkatron. And you, you need to chill it out. Let me talk to him. Tell him. Look, T O to the E, jamming on the beat, and now we're Big Earl, make 'em stand to their feet. Uh. uh crash landed on this strange planet, trying to find the pieces, but this place is gigantic. Running from the bees and dodging all the moles. Somebody tried to run me over with a lawnmower. <laughs> Maybe all it needs a little funk. Maybe that's all they need. Come on. Here it is. Gotta feel the funk from Funkatron. Come on, shake your thing and get it on. You can't hate when you're feeling the funk, yo. Just let it go in the funky flow. Yeah. Yo, what's up? What's up? This is Greg. I'm here in my office. Check it out. I am a co-creator of the original Toe Jam and Earl games, and we are releasing a new Toe Jam and Earl game. It's called. Back in the groove. I hope you like this one. It's pretty fun, if I do say so. I think you'll like it. Rated E for everyone. Yo, Earl, we made it back to Earth. And it only took 26 years. Not bad. First thing we need to do is get some new pages. Mom must be broke, 'cause I haven't gotten a page since 1991. I just hope people recognize us now that we're all high def and whatnot. Earl, I'm red with three legs. You're orange and huge. We're aliens and we're mad funky. People gonna recognize. Toe Jam and Earl: Back in the Groove is available now on all major platforms. 
It's a return to the classic Toe Jam & Earl formula, incorporating the best elements of all the previous games. You'll get the roguelike randomness of Game 1, the hyperfunk zone and rhythm dancing of Game 2, topped off with the best elements of Game 3. It's all here with Back in the Groove, the ultimate Toe Jam & Earl experience. My priority on this one is very clear, you know, it is for the fans and, and my criteria for success will be whether or not Toe Jam & Earl fans feel like it hits the spot for them.